All right. We are live. Well, live right now. But anyways, I'm with Kathleen Heffernan, and this is her very first podcast. Welcome. Yeah. Thank you. From the great white north of Canada. Yes. I'm in Fort McMurray, Alberta, Canada. How's the weather? Is it still snowy? Uh, there's a little bit of snow outside, but it's pretty warm. Like it's I guess it's probably like 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Fort McMurray, is that a big place? Uh, there's 80,000 people here. Roughly. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Because there's like a, the oil sands, which is north of Fort McMurray. And there's a bunch of people that live out at site. So then there's like, I think it's like around 150 if you include that. But there's people coming and going and people that fly in and out of the sites. But the city itself is probably about 70 or 80, but it fluctuates. It's like a fluctuating city depending on oil prices and what's happening in the world and all that kind of stuff. Got it. Is that who you fly for, oil and gas companies? Uh, I don't really want to talk about the company. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. But as far as being a pilot, how long, it, when did you start, uh, when did you start, when did you get, become a pilot? How long have you been flying? I've been flying since 2001. Okay. So you're a captain now, right? Uh, I have flown as captain, but currently not. Um, I, I left the company for a few years and I flew for an airline and now I'm back at the bottom of the seniority. So I am an FO at the moment. That's better. I, that's what I started out at. Well, until I got COVID screwed me over, but how'd you like flying for the airlines? How'd you like that? Um, it was cool. Like it was, uh, kind of like a great big adventure. There is, um, a whole story there as well but uh yeah I don't know it was uh it was interesting it just wasn't all that I expected I prefer that's what I've heard flying. yeah like it was really long flying days like very exhausting and very short rest periods and a lot of flip-flopping and schedule between working the night shift to working early mornings and no vacation time <laughs> like really bad schedule you're like a bus driver you're like a bus driver you really are. And, um, <clears throat> and we had to move out, like to different cities. Like, um, yeah. so I would live out of my suitcase for like the whole year and I moved four times in a year to like Europe, Toronto, Calgary, back to Toronto. Like I was everywhere. So you flew for Air Canada? Was it Air Canada you were flying with? No, I used to fly for Sunwing. Sunwing. Okay, cool. And now you're doing the private thing, which is probably a whole lot better. Cause you, uh, but you're still busy, right? Cause you, you, you're corporate pilot. So you're like on call pretty much. Right. Uh, yes. That sucks. Yeah, well, it can be good, but then at the same time. Yeah. We have a schedule, but, um, yeah, it's just a really good, yeah, it's a great schedule. We know when we're flying and you know, in advance for the most part, what, uh, what kind of aircraft do you fly? I'm flying a citation five, six. Oh, nice. That's what awesome. I I got a uh, in the Lear thirty five, okay. SIC in Lear thirty five. Because I feel like whenever I tell people what I fly, I say I fly a Citation five sixty Encore, and then like, oh okay, I'm not sure I know what that is. It's kind of like a Lear jet. Like, oh okay, it's a Lear jet, right? <laughs> and so it's like, much. Why? Like, why it's a little bit bigger. Know? It's a little bit bigger than a Lear jet. Lear jets are really compact. The 35 is at least. 35 was. How many seats did it have? I think it fit, sat eight. Eight in the back? Yeah. That's what yeah. it was. It wasn't a big cabin, though. It was like bench seating. There were, I don't think there was any, there, it was bench seats, I think. There may have been two like individual seats, and then the rest were bench type seating. Um, but yeah, and then, Plus, I do like. Did you, and you asked? We were talking. You asked me if I flew helicopters. Did you ever want to try that? Did you ever want to get your helicopters? Uh, not really. No, no. It's no, fun. I had a friend die in a helicopter crash. So. Oh. Yeah, yeah that's uh, the one. Was that recent? Not really recent. Like okay. It was like fourteen years ago. It feels like just okay. Yesterday. You know. Because they're. <laughs> well, no, I just asked because they they just had a crash in Alaska for a tour company, I believe it was. And I think like eight people died. Um, but they don't know the, the, 
how it happened, but Alaska, it's a little different flying, but it's a lot of fun. I enjoy it. It's like, as far as being a pilot, flying a helicopter, you actually have to fly, you know, cause you don't have any autopilot or anything. So you have to do the cyclic and the collective and raise and lower and press and forward and plus you your feet. What's that? How many hours do you have in a helicopter? Mm, almost a thousand. Okay. Yeah. And then I've got my fixed wing stuff too. And but as far as fun flying, helicopter is really fun, especially like when you engine failures and auto rotations. That's a lot of fun. Yeah. I highly recommend it, but you know. But. Yeah, I don't know. I think like I think it only converts like what like seven hours from airplanes to helicopters. So to me, like it's just so expensive. And to learn how to fly another piece of machinery, I'm just like, I don't know, like I I like my airplane. <laughs> you know, I you know, in in all honesty, the, yeah. If you're gonna fly distance, helicopter's not the way to go because <laughs> you're just sitting there and you you don't you always have to have your feet on the pedals. You don't have audio autopilot, so you're always flying it, so you don't really get to relax. Where in an aircraft, you can you know once you get to flight level and everything, just hit autopilot and. Shh. And just do your things and check things out and make sure things are running smoothly and look out the window. Helicopter, you're like, I like, I like to go for like a flight, but I don't think I would like invest my time and energy in learning how to fly it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a lot of time and it and it is expensive too. And you've got a. I remember seeing some. Don't you have a float plane? <laughs> no, no, I don't have a float plane. I have my float rating though. Do you? Okay. Maybe that's what I saw. This this is a while ago. Maybe that's what you said. You you really you had something about you'd earned it. Down in my uh, Instagram somewhere. I think. No, this was, this was like a while ago. This was like on Facebook. Cause see, I first found you on Facebook because I learned how to make almond milk from you. Really? That must yeah, have been you post. Years ago. Yeah, that was a while ago. I just remember. I always remember. I learned how to make almond milk because I was really into. I've always been into eating healthy and I always, uh, huh? Oh, I didn't know that that's how you found me. Yeah. I learned how to make almond milk through you and it's a, it's a process. It's, it was, it was a, cause I wanted to do things like I wanted to make foods and, you know, try and get like really basic. And I just want to try and make almond milk. And I remember finding a recipe and you explain how to do it. And so I, I, for a while I was making it and I was like, man, this is kind of expensive. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's, but you know, I found things to do with the, uh, the leftover almond grounds. Like after, you know, you like separate it from the, yeah. What do you do with those? What oh, I was threw them away. Oh, I would just like take it and like put it on like a cookie sheet and like uh -huh. lay it out and then like kind of let it dry. And then I would bake it. I know it sounds weird, but I would like kind of crisp it up <laughs> and like, the oven and then i would put it into granola i'd make like a homemade granola i was gonna say you probably make cookies or something out of that. that's a good idea because then you could probably ground it up too, make a flour maybe no yeah you could probably do that there's so many things i bet the, i bet if you googled it there would be like hundreds of recipes of what you can do with the leftover grounds but i always just kind of kept it simple and i would just make it into like a granola hmm did you ever sell those did you want to like make your own kathleen granola bars <laughs> <laughs> um well i don't know i think that you know so around the time when you probably saw okay so i renovated my kitchen when you probably okay. saw that video of me making that almond milk i spent thousands of dollars on renovating my kitchen for one year later for a big giant uh, fire to come and burn down my entire city, <laughs> not my entire city, but like. Oh, that's right. You guys had like huge fires a couple years back, didn't you? Yeah. So my house. Oh, you in your house got burned down. Uh, well, it's kind of an interesting story, but uh, pretty much everything got burned down around my house. Yeah, was, I remember. But I remember that. Toxic, um, toxic stuff that was like found, like if you were to like touch, like. I don't know, like the countertop, there's like these little tiny fine grains of toxic substances from the, from all the smoke and like we weren't allowed to come back to our houses for like two months, even uh -huh. just not done on the step. That's right. I remember that was like two or three years ago, wasn't it? Toxic you got big fires, 
you guys had big fires in Canada like two, three years ago, wasn't it? It was almost five years ago. Okay. My numbers are off. But yeah, I remember that. I remember you because it was really dry and it was like the worst fires I think Canada had ever experienced in a long time. It was the largest natural disaster in Canadian history. Damn. Do you ever yeah. see bears? Do you see grizzly bears where you are? Yeah. Do you really? Yeah, there's bears. Grizzly bears? Uh, I think they might be brown bears, but there could be grizzlies. Wow. I'm not sure. I know there was a bear that killed a girl in Fort McMurray. Uh, I don't think it was a grizzly, though, but it must have been hungry or something. I don't know. It's not a good story, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so <laughs> there's bears in the area. Like, people are, you know, we because they're brown bears, people aren't as scared but they're probably just as bad they go around and like get the garbage there's if you leave your garbage out front like, there's, there's there's been bears in the neighborhood i've been going for a walk around my block and then the cops will drive by and say there's a bear in the neighborhood and i'm like looking around bear, like, at home. do you carry bear spray no <laughs> yeah. you, you may want to carry bear spray yeah <clears throat> really them. like they're around but they're i don't know i'm not that scared so so how about so you're a pilot and then you're also fit and you've got your little gig going on. So how is it when you're really busy? How do you find time to, cause this is a good question for, cause a lot of people are really busy, have really busy lifestyles and then being a pilot, you're constantly, you know, you don't always have free time cause you have to be on call. How do you balance your fitness with your work? Well, I, I make my fitness a priority, but at the same time, I make my sleep a priority. You know what I mean? So, oh, of course. <laughs> like, I guess I make healthy food choices. So if I can't make my workouts, then I just make sure that I'm eating super clean or yeah, just eat, eat right. I feel like you don't really have to work out that hard if you're eating right. I feel like people are always over-exercising to make up for a bad diet and so as long as you're eating like really clean like whole foods most of the time then it should be okay it's difficult when you're traveling though yeah i could imagine yeah yeah like, do so do you make a lot of you do the meal prep and stuff when you know you're gonna fly for a couple of days do you just get things all set so you know you at least have some healthy options that you made yes i make sure my meal prep is ready and yeah, when I used to fly for the airline, um, it was more difficult because I was traveling through borders. So sometimes mm. you would go somewhere and they would confiscate all your chicken, like especially in Mexico. You're like, oh, the Mexicans took my chicken again. So why? Why would they, they take your chicken? Why did they take your chicken? My vegetables and I'd be like, oh. But then I'd just, you know, make sure that, yeah, it's hard because they would take all your food. So then you'd be like starving and you're like, hey, well, I got no choice. I got to eat something like crappy, like not crappy, like food's always good but something that's not part of the diet but then I kind of revolve my cheat meals around those moments so sometimes it kind of gets a little bit boring because you can't like go party with your friends or go out for dinner that week because you eat random food it depends on how strict you want to be with your diet like if I had a show or something or I had a shoot then I'd be more strict but like for real life I just don't really I don't let myself worry about it that much I'm like well my body might not be like 100% perfect but it's just about making healthy choices like whenever you can and then yeah. getting back on track as soon as possible you just have to get back on track as soon as possible like when you can <clears throat> and stop making excuses because <laughs> i feel like people go into a perpetual like state of like making excuses and not correcting for the error because it's not about it's too easy it's too easy to make excuses to find a reason not to because you always can i mean just like you said you you're busy with your work and then you find time if not work out at least you're eating healthy and that's a, people don't understand how important food is so how did like speaking of food how did you so you, you've got a cookbook i remember right and then aren't you aren't you working on something else you're doing another put another book together yes so i have one cookbook and here i'll show you i have it right here but it's it's just sitting over here <laughs> it's not organized for this to be great okay so this is the 
hard copy and I have another one coming. So this is going to be an extinct version of the Bikini Mall cookbook. So I don't know if you've seen this cover, but it was like the ebook cover. I sold a whole bunch of them like this, but I was kind of feeling honestly like this cover was like not good because it was just too like, you know, like fa not family oriented. It's like, hey, there's Kathleen and her half naked in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, we're going to scratch that. And actually, uh, this is going to be, this is actually the new cover right here. I'll look at you fight with your dog. Yeah, that's. With the, is that the apron? No, that's not even my dog. Actually, it's funny. This dog, like, is a friend of mine. And it's just funny because, yeah, because everyone thinks the dog's mine. And that, was, that she was so long ago now. But do you get, uh, it's so funny that fitness is stressed, yet you can look fit. And then people will also give you crap for posting pictures of yourself, like on the cover of your book that, uh, or, or wearing a bikini or something. And it, it, do you get, do you get the, I'm sure you get more positive than negative, but do you get that kind of feedback from people? Like, why are you promoting? It's, it's, do you know what I'm saying? It's kind of weird how today we want, we encourage people to like, plus size is okay, which it is, but at the same time, it's with COVID. If you're not healthy, those are the risk factors. Usually people with obesity, cancer, you know, are high, at higher risk of getting COVID as opposed to someone who's actually takes care of himself, eats healthy, works out. Do you get, do you find that you'll get negative feedback sometimes for being fit? You know what I'm saying? Uh, not really. I mean, I'm just curious because it seems like it's like you'll uh, you'll read stories sometimes where women are promoting, you know, I had a baby and look at I'm look at I'm already back in shape. And then people, they'll get negative feedback for being proud that they got back into shape after having a baby. It's we live in a weird society with social media. Yeah, I think, um, I don't know. I guess I feel like the thing that I notice is I feel like when I don't see people for a long time I don't know why but like for some reason people are always like apologizing to me about the fact that they are not in as good a shape as they could be like my opinion of people isn't like a judgment on any level you know what I mean like mm -hmm. I guess I feel like maybe because I'm a personal trainer I'm always promoting like being and like these are the things that you if you want to be in this kind of shape but i think that it's difficult. like i know that it's difficult because there there's more than just excuses there's real life and there's things to get in the way and like people especially in this city they're working 12 hour days so when yeah. are you feel prep when you're working 12 hours and then you have like eight hours you need to be sleeping and then you know you might just be like doing nothing for a few hours trying to relax right so the last thing you want to do is cook on those hours when but there's ways around it i mean also in that in just saying that the people in the city also make quite a lot of money so you can always hire somebody to meal prep for you all you gotta do is pick it up and then it's done right yeah and they've had those like meals hello flat hello fresh things like that that you can subscribe subscribe to but i mean i enjoy cooking i don't mind it i always try and find time to usually when i cook i'll i'll make something big so i'll have like leftover so i don't have to cook for a while and something yeah. like that but it's i like to make like eight servings at once so that yes for like a couple of days and then people are like how do you eat the same thing over and over i just do you know it's just you know it's healthy and you can and that's why you know it's in it you know what you're getting in it and you know that it's it's what you know it's healthy I think the big thing is um, everybody's different. So like, like everybody has like a different job, a different uh, house kind of setting, different people in the house, uh, influences of people around you. Like there's so much influence from your partner, like people that are in relationships and or married or even just people living in the house. Like people, like I find that like there's a stat that if your best friend is obese then there's like a 70 percent chance that you're going to be obese and the same thing goes for uh your Healthy. marital partner right so 
we influence each other through our diet because we usually eat together and food can be very tempting. So when one person's eating stuff that's yummy and like a little bit higher in calories, then everybody's like, oh, let's all eat together. There is no, I think that, um, so I guess what you're asking me about people uh, commenting about like being in shape, I think there is kind of even some judgment about being on a, a diet. Yeah, that's, I think that's more what I mean, the judgment, like being judgmental. That's, I've had that's... people say, like, are you still on your weird diet? your weird diet and I was like is it weird it's kind of normal what do they consider what what why do they consider it weird what what is what is weird about it well I think it was just that I I have this recipe in my cookbook it's my meatball recipe and I pretty much used to eat these meatballs all the time with a sweet potato but uh what kind of meatballs are they oh my god they're so good what are they made out of (laughs) turkey and oatmeal there's oatmeal in it to kind of keep it together Okay. And then there's vegetables and garlic and some salt. There's these giant meatballs are like, and yeah, I just eat like a big meatball. <laughs> I actually like, actually, I, I use ground turkey all the time. Can you smell? I got marinara sauce with ground turkey cooking right now. I love to cook. Ooh, nice. But I didn't, I didn't make meatballs. I just ground the turkey up and made like ground turkey with seasonings and threw it in sauce and but the meatballs that's on how so what are they like baseball sized meatballs oh uh i'd say probably mm. and you just eat those do you put parmesan cheese or anything in them or just oatmeal no i try and stay away from cheese for the most part just because i just find that dairy doesn't really it get will. the gains as well as other things yeah, I, I'm kind of, I'm pretty strict with my, you know, like today's my cheat day. So I had pancakes for breakfast. Other than that, I don't really eat milk or, or during the week bread or anything like that. So I just try and eat smart. Do you, uh, so how long have you been a personal trainer? Uh, about 20 years. Oh, really? And that's when you got into, so what's your background? Do you, did you, cause, okay, I got to ask this cause you're Canadian. Did you play hockey? you know I never played hockey but there was this one night I was at this like party or something it was a few years ago I never picked up a hockey stick in my life and apparently there was like a guy there that was quite like not I don't know if he was professional but he was like a good hockey player at least that's what my friends were saying so I'm like yeah whatever so I grabbed this hockey stick and I like oh he was a goalie or something anyways I got a (laughs) yeah I got like a shot in and they were like what and it was just like, anyways, I apparently am like, I am a really good hockey player. I guess I have like, I'm really good. You just didn't shot. know it. You just didn't know yeah, it. I've never, played before. I've never played before until that one time. And I got, I'm very good at aiming and getting things like, I can, like, it's, like you know, darts. Or yeah, like, yeah, darts. We have those in America. Darts. We have those here. Yeah, like at the bar, I get like, I don't ever play, but I can get like the bullseye really easily. <laughs> very good at archery like i, remember I was gonna say I, do you like to shoot a bow no i never i only did once like when i was in camp and i got like the bullseye and then like when i go bowling i'll knock all the things like i'll get like the i don't even know what it's called like i don't even know how to play i just aim and i and... get <laughs> it's like this weird time. but i don't know i don't use it for anything it just yes so you, you grew up in Canada and not until just a few years ago, you never touched a hockey stick. Wow. That's weird. Yeah. That, that's, you're like, you're not Canadian. How, how are you? <laughs> how, how? I don't know any girls that play hockey. Are you serious? Yeah, I don't know anybody. Oh my God. Hockey. I actually had on a girl. I trained her about 15 years ago in, in Arizona of all places. And she went on to play for Harvard and the U S women's national team. And they lost to Canada in 2014. They were up to nothing in the third period. And they lost to Canada. But anyways, long story, I trained her. And then we, we, we did a podcast uh, about a month or so ago. And uh, I hadn't seen her in forever. And it was so neat to see how much she's done and, she grew up and she works for the Phoenix Coyotes and or Arizona Car- Coyotes, excuse me. And yeah, it was really cool. And, but yeah, I know a lot of girls. It's really, 
Wow. I have never met a girl that told me she played hockey in my life. Wow. TV. It's like I know it exists, but I met it. Yes, it does. Yes, I know. I'm sure it's probably just a circle of people because I got into like a very niche market with um, fitness competitions. Like I've done nine huh. shows. Is that your thing? Was that like how you were? You, so you didn't really, did you play sports at all growing up or no? Uh-huh. Or you just were fit? No, I wasn't. I wasn't fit when I was younger. So what motivated you to get, start working out and, and then eventually do competitions? Um, well, I, okay. I don't know how to say this because I feel like it comes across kind of weird, but like I was at a family reunion when I was like 12 and like mm-hmm. we were all starting to put on a little bit of weight. I remember when, when we all became like preteens into like early teenagerhood we all started gaining a lot of weight. Like we used to eat a lot of chips and like drink Slurpees and watch TV and sit around slopping around on the weekends, you know, like eating like <laughs> big, big, big chips and not working out. Like my mom and dad didn't really uh, push us into sports at all. My parents are very academic. So my dad didn't really want to spend money on sports. I think it was very expensive. And oh, yeah. He, yeah. They didn't really. Oh, my cats are fighting upstairs. I don't hear him, so it's okay. <laughs> at each other. Anyways, so, um, yeah, so I went to this family reunion, and my cousins, we took all these pictures, right? Like, we have a huge family with, like, my dad and my mom have, or my mom has, like, seven brothers, so there were seven families, and then we we're doing family individual pictures and group pictures, or, like, I don't know, like, a hundred of us together, and one of my cousins, she was pretty young, and I think it was, like, 12 or 13, but she said to me, later she said that we were all laughing at you guys because you guys were the fat family and i was like what what <laughs> the fat family right i was like I, we didn't see ourselves as fat or like overweight or anything but when i was home actually last i was looking at these pictures of me and my sisters when i was about 12 or 13 and i was like mom we are all so like heavy like even like even me <laughs> like i was so chubby like my face was round and like my body was round and anyways so I guess maybe her saying that made me start looking into healthier choices my mom said she hid those pictures from us forever she didn't want us to have like a low self-esteem or something and I was like (laughs) I don't even know (laughs) but um yeah I I did do a lot of different dieting especially in high school and junior high but I had this one girlfriend and she was quite thin and she was very pretty. And um, I remember she told me that she just ate bananas and Slurpees. And yeah, like not, <laughs> not a good diet for a 13 or 14 year old. But of course, being uneducated on nutrition, I was like, oh, well, I'm only going to eat bananas and have Slurpees too because she looks good. So I'm going to do what she's doing. <laughs> so at 14, I think I, um, I wasn't thick. But I did lose weight, obviously, because we walked around all the time drinking these Slurpees and having bananas. It was basically just like a vegan high-carb diet, I guess. Um, But yeah, then I got really sick. I think I got mono or something. And they did my blood work. And my blood work was like totally off. Like I had red blood cells and my white blood cells were like, yeah, like totally out. I remember being concerned because my mom thought that I was going to have like a junior or something like that. (laughs) I was like, I've been tired. It's the Slurpees and the bananas I've been having all the time. (laughs) Sugar rush. So when's the last time you had a Slurpee? Oh God, I haven't had a Slurpee in like probably 15 years. You've never craved one on a cheap take? I want to have a Slurpee. Not really. No? Okay. (laughs) I'm just kidding. So So you started working out in your teens? And then just kind of how did how did you go from chubby Kathleen to fit Kathleen to deciding to do competitions? Um, I guess I started lifting weights when I was fifteen. Like so, when I was fourteen, yeah, I had that experience. And then my mom and dad wanted me to go to an all girls boarding school, so I lived in like a complex with sounds fun. Yeah, with the nuns and the other yeah. girls. <laughs> and in <laughs> class they wanted us to lift weights and I hadn't really lifted weights before in my life so yeah anyways basically we just um we were doing like calculations to see like you know over like a four-week period how how strong you get 
doing various exercises. And I was taking it really seriously because I, I guess maybe I have a competitive personality. Like I even like, even then I didn't think I was competitive, but apparently I was because I was like determined to get these chin ups, right? <laughs> and uh, yeah, I don't know. I went from being able to do no chin ups to being able to do 15 in like a short amount of time. And I was like, whoa, that was crazy because it was like the strength gains that I was really surprised by because other people didn't have the same results, but I wasn't sure if it was because they just weren't trying. I felt like they weren't giving it all that they could. So they were like, I don't really care. It was kind of like, I don't care. I'm like, I care. I've got to get this. <laughs> so I don't know. But um, yeah, so I guess I bought a gym membership with a girlfriend of mine and she wanted me to go to the gym with her when I was like 17. And we started going to the gym, but we'd go to like McDonald's and get like an unhealthy breakfast and then go to the gym. So I wasn't noticing like that my body was looking much better because I was like, well, I'm eating, like I'm working out like five or six days a week, but then like I'm eating McDonald's. <laughs> I thought that if I worked out that I didn't have to eat healthy. Like I thought I could still eat all the good stuff that I wanted. Oops. To eat. <laughs> yeah. And so that's where I was kind of learning that like the diet was pretty important. And so I started reading fitness magazines and that's actually kind of like why I chose to make this my cover because I was really influenced by, you know, fitness models from like oxygen magazine or these like shape magazine back then that I used to read in fitness and muscle and fitness for hers was a big one. Yeah. I remember muscle fitness. So I, that's how I, shit, that was a long time ago for me. And then I think it was iron, iron man magazine. I think there was another one, iron man magazine. Yeah. Those are the ones I initially started. And then, so when did you, how did you get, because I know people, girls and guys who have done competitions. And <clears throat> so how did you get into the whole, because a lot of them have coaches now that help them with their training and their, their, what they're putting in their bodies. And, and you probably like first starting out, that's all newer. So you probably didn't have all that. Right. You, the gym, like I didn't really know what I was doing, but I was noticing that I felt better when I was working out. And so I started reading fitness magazines and started following kind of like what the girls were saying in the magazines, like how they ate. And I started taking nutrition courses as I was getting older, like in college and university. And I was always reading like fitness magazines cover to cover and different nutrition books. Um, you remember Body for Life by Bill Phillips? Yes, I do. Yeah. I remember so that. Yeah, I loved his book. I met this girl and she told me that she could do bicep curls, 25 pound bicep, like dumbbells. And she was a little girl. She was like five foot one and just small, right? And I was, I'm five foot five. I'm like, well, I can't do more than 17 and a half or 20 pounds. Like there's no way. 20 pounds, I could only do six reps maybe, right? And I'd be like, okay. so she was saying she could do like 20 reps with 25 pounds. I'm like, from this diet, she said that this food was making her stronger. So I was like, oh, okay. So I'll take a look at this diet. So that's when I started doing Body for Life. And I pretty much followed that program for like seven or eight years. But I also, during that time frame, became a personal trainer and um, a group exercise uh, instructor. I don't know why I'm drawing a blank for the word. But yeah, I used to teach group exercise classes at the gym. I started teaching the classes because I learned how to work out by going to the classes. And then I just became an instructor because I was in so many classes, I was doing like five or six a day. And then I was almost like, I could teach the class, but I was so familiar with all the moves and like choreography or choreography. I was like, <laughs> I was never in dance. So I just kind of learned how to move. To move the on your own. Yeah. You know, class. it's funny you mentioned that, that you taught yourself through going to classes because that's the way YouTube is now. Everyone yeah. could go and learn how to work out and do all these things just through YouTube. And I was the same way. I actually taught aerobics a long time ago. Step aerobics. We'll <laughs> leave it. We'll leave. We'll, we'll leave it at that. But I learned how from the instructor, and then. Yeah, just, pound beat. What's that? Right? You have to in your class around the thirty-two pound beat of the music for the step aerobics classes. I, sure. <laughs> I I didn't. I I just did it. I don't really remember how I did it, but it was. I held the beginner class. That's that was my deal. I did the <laughs> beginner class and. I don't remember. I my friend's brother was a DJ, and he helped us put like music together. And but I don't remember the beats or anything. I just kind of that's a good song. Let's do it to this, and I put the little routine. So yeah, this was a long time ago. Long time ago. I don't do that anymore. I box. 
But yeah, it's the same thing. I mean, learning, I was the same way. I learned how to do things by going to classes or reading magazines and stuff. Now it's like you go to YouTube and uh, how to squat and then just punch it in. And there's your, there's your lesson on how to squat. You can learn how to dance now on, on YouTube. You know that, right? So you don't know how to dance. So you can learn how to dance. No, I'm not ready for that. No, too much. Too so Yeah. Baby steps, baby steps. <laughs> I'm scared of dancing. Really? Yeah, so hold on. How are you scared of dancing, but you've been on stage? Explain um, that one. <laughs> We're not strippers. <laughs> well, I don't mean that. I don't mean like, but I mean, just as far as, cause what, what, what's your fear of dancing? Cause I'm, I'm similar. I feel like people are watching me. I get paranoid. Like it, like they're not, but I think everyone's like staring at me for some reason. That's narcissistic, but it's not a very, yeah, maybe. I don't know. Don't feel like I know what I'm doing. Really? Okay. That awkward, like that awkward answer that I never, you would never see me on the So, what was it like being on stage first time? Oh, I was so nervous, so terrified. Yeah. Like Did I, you, you practice, right? You practice your routine? No? no you just no, went no. up on stage. Yeah. Like, I didn't even know I was supposed to practice, really. Like, I wasn't. When I first started competing, it wasn't like as competitive as it is now. Like things have really like changed in the fitness industry with like how um, how people are so prepared for their posing and everything. Like at least at least in the shows that I was doing and the trainers I was working with, it wasn't like super emphasized. But then it was starting to become more and more emphasized, and I could see that it was definitely the difference between a winner and a non-winner. You know what I mean? Like how it doesn't really matter, like how good you look. If you can't bring your stage presence on stage, then you will be overlooked because people are, they're looking for somebody who's like, like I, I saw this one girl, she was so fabulous, so fabulous. And she just walked up and ran off, you know, like it wasn't. And then there was another girl who was, beautiful but probably not as fabulous as the fabulous one that ran away and she and she ended up winning and i was like she on the stage how was it after because i know that the pre-competition getting ready for it you're really strict on your diet did you go to town after donuts and everything pizza donuts did you yeah first competition yeah i feel like that sounds really good Oh, yeah, there was a bunch of, <laughs> that was so hard. Like the first competition I ever did, I was like, this is the hardest thing I've done in my life. You know what I mean? But um, then you do it again. Yeah. Torture there yourself becomes, again. Yeah, there becomes like an addiction, I think, to being that cut. Like you just become like, it's just like you look so good that you're just like, I want to look that good all the time, right? But the thing is, is you can't really look that good all the time unless you do the amount of exercise and you keep eating exactly the way that you're eating because you have to eat that way to look that way. So yeah. what I've kind of found is um, I'm doing this fitness challenge now. We're running a fitness yeah, challenge. Yeah, I was going to talk about that too. Yeah, go ahead. You can talk about it. Go ahead. Yeah, like it It basically shows people how to live a healthy lifestyle similar in concepts to a fitness competition, but with a lot more freedom, you know what I mean? So that you're still getting a very similar result, but not as like hard. Like so how does it how does it work? They go to that website, fitnesschallengeright.ca? Uh, the fitnesschallenge.ca. And then how does that, how do they get involved? How do people, and what what do they do to, because it's competition, no, and not really competition, just something to challenge, it's a challenge for people to get healthier. So how do you come up with this? Is this your, is this your idea? Yes, me and my business partner, Destiny Users. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I've been, I've been doing fitness challenges probably since 2014. But Destiny is, um, she's also a personal trainer and has been for years. And she's a photographer, videographer. So really, together, we can create so much better content. Mm -hmm. And I guess the big thing is, um, 
at the end of the 12 weeks, the girls, okay, Bueller was asking me what makes me motivated. Like, how do you stay motivated to stay fit or whatever, right? And I'm like, well, I just like, I'm like, I just set up like a photo shoot or something so that I have something to look forward to you or, you know, I plan to go on a trip or plan like something or something reason why I have to stay fit. And so I have like an excuse. My excuse is I can't eat that because I've got a shoot coming up or something, right? <laughs> but like if I didn't have anything planned or something that I had on the go, then maybe I would be more likely to eat that pizza. You know what I mean? Oh, and yes. So my people in like the competition season are so strict. And then afterwards, they fall apart and they're like, oh my God, I'm going to eat everything. And I have nothing to look forward to. And then people become depressed because they don't have anything to look forward to. Almost like this competition was like, the thing that was like the whoa, like the big moment of their life and we all felt that way like everybody that competed we all felt like there was like this big lead up to the show this moment and then it's kind of like a anticlimactic is that the word yes yeah and then it's like it's like when you win something and then there's a lot of it's you celebrate for a little bit and then afterward it's like okay let's go home you know it's it's yeah you bust your ass and then you get it and then the celebration lasts a little bit and then it's like okay you know yeah so there is has to be something more to look forward to or something to work towards i guess you always have to reframe your goals because and that's what i kind of realized because i've done nine shows nine nine so I've been uh, the like that many times you know what i mean so there's like that lead up and then the down and then it's like how do you continue or how do you how do you stay fit for the long haul? Cause it's not really about like necessarily looking a certain way, but also being healthy because I've seen so many people in fitness, like there's just so many roots that become unhealthy. And like, I'm not saying that I've been super healthy myself either. Like there's things that happen with competitions where you dehydrate and you know what I mean? Like that's not exactly mm -hmm. fitness. Nothing healthy about de being dehydrated. <laughs> you know what no. I mean? Like, how is that? But it's, <clears throat> it's, competitive sport and that's what people are doing in order to place and it's kind of um it's kind of sad because it shouldn't have to be like that but it is that way because it comes down to aesthetics and what people look like rather than like their mental spiritual and emotional health which is really more important than hell yeah a certain way do you meditate yes do you how often do you do it every day uh, I have been trying to... It's hard. It's no joke, meditation. Yeah. Um, well, I read that if you meditate for 20 minutes a day, it's supposed to lengthen your telomeres naturally, which it reverses aging, supposedly. I better start. I better do it a couple hours a time. <laughs> a day. 20 minutes is all you need. 20 minutes a day. Um yeah, and I noticed that when I do the meditations that I feel like I look younger. So I do it not just to, I do feel like I noticed that like our thoughts are so powerful and the things that you let bother you throughout the yeah. day. Like it's very, if you let your mind go like without being aware of what your thoughts are, I feel like meditation helps you to be more aware throughout the day what you're thinking about so that you realize sometimes that you're going down a negative path and it makes you faster at stopping yourself from thinking negative thoughts totally it is really yeah i've noticed that i've been doing it since like january i got this app on my phone it was free and it had a whole five-week course on meditation the hardest i've been able to do it but to get your mind to quiet and slow down we can just oh my god it is it's not easy, but I found when I'm out in nature with just the sound of birds and stuff, and that's where I go, and I'll just close my eyes and start breathing, and I can, like, focus. But if I'm – but like you said, though, the one thing I've noticed is that if I get upset or I'm starting to let something bother me, I just start breathing, and I catch myself, and it just changes your whole attitude. It really does. It's it's incredible just what breathing can do. <clears throat> For sure. How long have you been doing it? Uh, I probably started meditating maybe five or six years ago. Okay. So you've been doing it for a while. Yeah. But I took it more seriously uh, probably a couple years ago. 
do you do it in the morning? Do you have a particular time of day you always do your meditation? I find like first thing in the morning. And yeah. Then- always. So you do it twice a day. Yeah. I know it. I've done it. Have you done it where you're breathing and you, you start dozing off because you just get so relaxed and you're not trying to sleep, but you'll sit there and then you'll be like, I, I've had that happen several times and I'll just go take a nap because I'm so relaxed. I used to actually, well, before my phone burned down, this room, I had like a mat on the floor and I remember my first time trying to meditate, I laid down flat on the on my yoga mat and like, you know, in that corpse position and I woke up like three hours later, like I fell asleep. <laughs> first attempt but i just fell asleep <laughs> is that one of those sleeps where you're so tired you wake up and like you you kind of lot like where what's you, you don't you have to look at your watch and you don't realize what time it is and you see the light and you're like what i had that happen the other day and i woke up and i'm looking it was it was the middle of the day but i felt like i had been asleep for till the next day i'm like why is there light why is the windows open and stuff and yeah it's just but I was very relaxed. So your fitness aspect back to that. So competitions and then this challenge, anyone can do it, right? Guys and girls. Uh, we are open to taking males now. We at first were only training women just because, well, my business is called bikini fit. Well, you can mm-hmm. challenge bikini fit and I've been only working with women because of the bikini model cookbook. But I'm actually writing a second book, and it's called The Ultimate Physique Cookbook. And Ultimate yeah, Physique Cookbook? Ultimate Physique. Okay. So that one is going to be for men as well, but there's also going to be female calories because, you know, I feel like having, like, a men's version of the cookbook, I feel like it's best to have, like, the women. I think <laughs> I think it would be helpful to have, like, men and women serving sizes, so it's, it can be men or women for that one. But, I love Are you... Are you going to have your meatball recipe in there? Uh, no, because this is a new cookbook. And uh, yeah, but there'll be meatballs. They just won't be okay. that meatball. Other okay. meatball recipes. Yeah, I think there's another one. Are, uh, are these meatballs as good? Oh, they're all good. Okay. I remember I had this okay. day and she, she was laughing about all the different ways that she's like, I didn't realize you can make so many different versions of meatballs. So, like, there's like a meatball. <laughs> salad and then there's just meatball snacks and then there's meatball soups and there's just meatball meals <laughs> yeah meatballs are almost, so yeah cultures that do meatballs in so many different ways so how do people when they how do they get involved in this challenge do they sign up online and then how does it work how do they what what, what goes what happens okay so we have another one starting next week actually today up to today and tomorrow, the challengers doing the first round of the fitness challenge are sending in their before and after transformation pictures. So that's what mm-hmm. they get voted on. So we're really excited because we're getting a lot of pictures coming in. And it's so cool to see like how well it worked because these are people that had no gyms. They were working out at home, right? Yeah. How is that? Yeah. Is uh are you guys open? Is Canada because I hear some places, wasn't it Ontario or somewhere just recently? Wanted to go on another 30 day lockdown or something? So, how is it up there? Uh, well, right now, Alberta. Alberta's what? It's open. Like, our gym's open. Okay. There. Okay. Up to be like a month ago, but things are probably going to, I don't know. Like, I think it's probably going to shut down again, but it's hard to say. Like, the numbers are going up, and I heard that BC's shutting everything down, and Toronto's on a big lockdown, and Ontario, I mean. And uh, yeah, I don't know, but. We have like the at-home workouts, like so good. Like these at-home workouts are so good. We spent so much time on it because it's close. So me and Destiny were trying to improvise and like, like, well, I don't know how can we make an incline? Like if somebody doesn't have, like, cause the gym equipment was difficult to find, right? Like Amazon was selling out of all their apps. Yeah, oh yeah. So we came up with, um, actually I have them right here. <laughs> this is like not on purpose, but we have these like bands, these fitness bands. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, we basically created a whole bunch of workouts using them. And then we have these booty bands, which are a similar color. And you just can have such great workouts at home with the bands and with some dumbbells. So we were, <laughs> I don't know if you've seen my, my bikini fit YouTube channel, or we have the fitness challenge YouTube channel too, where we're putting the workouts, but 
Yeah, like literally I have like a pillow and like a chair and I'm like, this is the incline bench curl. <laughs> and it's like, it works so good. It got a lot of views actually. And I had people commenting, I've never thought about doing it like that, but that works. It totally works. Pants are all, that's, I, like you said, the Amazon, it was, it's been so hard finding equipment. And then I bought a bunch of bands too, just to have, I've bought those adjustable, they're called um, power blocks. So you can adjust the weight. They're big. And cause that's one of the few free weights I could find. And I just bought bands. I've been doing a lot of band workouts and so bands are great. I never really, I mean, as long as I've been working out and coaching, I never really use bands until this year. And they're, yeah. they're, fa- they're fantastic. They're really good. They can do some great workouts with bands, totally. especially at home. Yeah. Like I think as far as strength, like it's probably a little bit more challenging to get your strength up. Like yeah. I feel like as far as aesthetics and like looking a certain way or losing weight, they're totally everything you need. Like I, I was getting great gains from it. And um, I've been going to the gym this month a little bit more just because I have a feeling that the gyms are going to close down. So I want to take advantage of that time getting out of the house a little bit, but yeah, I, I honestly think that things might be shutting down again, but I don't know. Poor- I hope not. They're portable too, bands. They're easy to go in case you travel. You can carry them with you. Oh, totally. Yeah. These are going to be like a staple at home and when I'm traveling for sure. But basically, you- people just sign up on the website. So there's two options there's the 12 week body transformation program, and then there's the 12 week body transformation with a photo shoot at the end. Yeah. So and- people include that in their program so they have the extra motivation. Because and there's. What I'm saying, I think- there's money prizes yeah. too, I saw, right? There's they can win some money. So right now we have nine thousand dollars in prizes for the first round that we have to announce. So that's why these people are taking their pictures. And then we're gonna be giving away uh three thousand dollars in cash prizes. And then we have a whole bunch of prize sponsors like Dedicate Healthy Kitchen and Fort McMurray. Um Fitness Girls magazine is gonna be taking one of the girls. Um, once we get the photo shoots done. Then we're submitting the pictures to the couple of magazines, Fitness Girls and Rescar Fit Magazine and NutriShop, which is also, uh, NutriShop is a supplement company that is oh, yeah, yeah. my book. So this is the uh, the old version, but we have a NutriShop version where we put some of the Nutri- or NutriShop supplements into the recipes. So they are taking my book in their store. So in the United States, they have 150 stores, NutriShop. So uh, working on getting that to print with them this week, hopefully I've been having a couple of hiccups with the printing companies, but that's a whole other story. And it should be available on Amazon within the month, like that new print, uh, that print version should be available uh, there. And um, yeah, so there's a bunch of prizes. Uh, I can't even remember where they all are right now, but NutriShop gave us like a $300 prize package. Um, Dedicate did. Uh, there's like a bikini line, a clothing line. Uh, Destiny does some energy healing and photo shoot. Destiny's a photographer, so she's doing some uh, photos. And then we also have different photographers in Edmonton and Calgary and makeup artists doing hair and makeup. So there's like the, the price packaging. I'm also giving away a 12 week body transformation one on one coaching, which is valued at $1,500. So there's like a whole bunch of prizes. So you create a big prize package for. The girls and make it worth their time and get motivated because i feel like i don't know i feel like all out of all the prizes like maybe the cash is a big one but also the photo shoot i feel like that's the thing that really motivated me and almost all the other fitness people that i know in the fitness industry like people stay on their diets and training program when they have a shoot coming up or like there's like going to be physical you've got to go on stage and stand in front of all those people in your swimming suit and be like this is my body this is my hard work right so like, it's mostly like, I don't even think that the money is the thing that motivates people to stay on track as much as the accountability to the results at the end. Yeah. The results, you know, I've seen some of the, I've seen some of the pictures you posted some, some people and it's the transformation is pretty remarkable for the short amount of time, which means they put the dedication into it, which is, I think it's, it has to become part of your daily routine. You know this, I mean, like you look forward to it. It's not, do you ever go to the gym? I, I've had it where I go to the gym. I'm like, oh, I don't want to be here. But once you get into it, it's like you never, that thought just lose. You just got to get in the motion, but you just know it's so much better for you. You just feel so much better once you start moving. Oh yeah, totally. I like to go to uh, the gym with some coffee. 
coffee always wakes you up. That's but, his job, yeah. Caffeine coffee, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, sometimes I'll have to like sit outside the gym if I'm really not feeling, like, especially when I'm in competition mode because, you know, like things get like, it's way more intense. Like your workouts are like really long then and your diet is a bit restrictive. So you're starting to get tired. So you're sitting outside the gym being like, okay, I can do this, I can do this, <laughs> you know? I literally have to sit outside the gym with my coffee, staring at the gym, sometimes for 15 minutes and like talk myself into going. Cause I'm like, but like for regular life, I feel like, I feel like because I've been through so much with my fitness competitions and I know how challenging it is and how like restricted the diet is and how intense the workout program is. I'm like, the fitness challenge is a walk in the park, you guys. This is like bringing lifestyle and it's good and it's doable. And like, it's, it's like an hour. Like these girls are working out for 50 minutes a day, like not even a full hour and they're getting these results. Yeah. It's been proven 20 minutes a day is, is more than enough. I've yeah. got a, I've got a guest that wants to say hi to you. No, I'm kidding. He's dog? my dog. Yeah, he's, he's really trying to get my attention right now. So, yeah. Let me see. Um, so, come here. Come on. Come on. Come here. Uh, is he big? No, he's he's, uh, he's called a blue lacy. <laughs> I can see his I, <laughs> I found I found him on the side of the road. <laughs> I was going to, I was actually going to one of my helicopter flight lessons and <clears throat> here in Texas, the traffic is horrible. So I'd always take the, this back road just to unwind and relax for the, my flight. And I, or for over a year, I was driving this back road. And so I knew everything that belonged there and I was driving and I saw him on the side of the road and as I was passing him, he was so skinny. He looked like he hadn't eaten in forever. And I just said to myself, if he's still there on my way back, I, I have to stop. And a couple hours later, I'm coming. I'm looking ahead, driving. It's a big cornfield. And he was just sitting at the edge of the cornfield. And so I pulled over, and he came up to me wagging his tail, and I threw him in the back of my truck. And <laughs> I've had him ever since. But he, he weighed 28 pounds when I found him. And now he's about 55. So... He packed on a few LBs. Yeah, he's a, and then I have a Rottweiler too, two Rottweilers. But they, they're camera, camera shy, as you can see. They don't want to hop on and say hello. <laughs> but yeah, he's a good dog. He's like, He kind of looks like a pit bull a little bit, but he's not. It's like this family in Texas, the Lacy's. It's a Texas yeah. State dog, which I didn't know. My vet told me. And uh the the way they bred them in eighteen hundred, you should it's pretty gruesome. Like they would, he told my vet was telling me the whole history on how the family bred, made this dog literally, and how they like separated. They would literally kill the ones that they felt were weak, like shoot them just right there. Uh, yeah, but this is like eighteen hundreds. Not say it was right back then, but that's how they did it, I guess. So, yeah, he's a good little dog. He's he's more of the guard dog than the Rottweilers are. Do you have any dogs? No. I got two cats. Do you like dogs? I do like dogs. I had a dog. Okay. I had a miniature wiener dog. They're a lot of work. They're like having kids. You know, cats, just food, water, and litter box. You can go about doing your pilot stuff. Dogs need attention. <clears throat> do you get, let me ask you this. Because you fit and you're a woman and you're in a male dominated industry, do you guys, because do you, do guys not give you as much like credibility maybe? So sometimes guys try and like do things for you because you're a woman and you're a pilot or, and you just say, I can handle this. Do you ever have guys like kind of, oh, it's probably older guys. I'm just curious. No. When I was younger, but not so much like anymore. Like, I don't know. I've been flying for 20 years. So, I mean, if somebody's trying to discredit me, it's kind of not possible. Yeah. <laughs> you know I would think I mean? like, so. Like, I don't think somebody's going to discredit me. Does that work in Canada? Like, when I, so how do, uh, how different is it getting a um, your pilot's license 
okay. certificate in Canada. I mean, is it because here it was so many hours and you take your check ride. And then if I was to fly to Canada, I need my radio operator's license for some reason to go to Canada. Is it is it much different? Because like, uh, do you guys have the same like hour requirements and all that stuff? Excuse me. I'm not 100% sure because I don't know what your hour requirements are in the United States. But to get your private pilot's license in Canada, it's 45 hours minimum. And then, oh, that's not bad. You know, a private pilot, but not like fly for a private company. But then you got to get your right, commercial right. pilot's license in 200 hours. And, you know, there's all those requirements within that. You got to write your uh, written exam and do the flight test. Just okay. Like private. And then in Canada, we have the airline transport pilot's license. Okay. I think it's like oh, it's the same then. It's, it's pretty much yeah. the same. I think the is different though. Like I know that the the way that it's done is different, but okay, but, like, probably stuff that most people wouldn't be that interested in. But it's like fifteen hundred hours of total time, and then there's all those requirements within it. And then I encourage know. people always. Uh, anytime I talk about flying, I love it so much. I'm always like, do a discovery flight. You never know. You may fall in love with it. Flight. Yeah. Is that what you did? How did you get started in flying? Is it something you always want to do? Uh, yeah, like I honestly, my friend, the one that died in the helicopter pilot accident. I don't know if I want to talk about this on the interview, but anyways, uh, yeah, just this group well, of Just guys, talk about whatever. I was out one night, out and about, and these guys came up to me. They were kind of like being all like, so we're pilots. <laughs> 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 right they were like there were these four guys they're all pilots and they were like out and about like out at some nightclub or something I'm like oh yeah cool anyways so they said that they would take me up on a discovery flight because two of them were instructors and one of them was a helicopter pilot and i think the other one was just a pilot maybe getting his commercial license i can't remember it was so many years ago it was like literally 21 years ago and uh anyways um yeah so they took me up on a discovery flight i had been thinking about flying because at the time i met this girl and she was getting her commercial pilot's license and i was like oh you can get that in Lethbridge." but i was already going to university and college like i went to college and university and i just wasn't really enjoying the classes that i was taking like to the point where i was like oh yeah i'm committed to this program and becoming a x y and z or whatever in my life right my dad is a university professor so i got like a discount to go to the university as right. like, child of a professor or something so I was taking a bunch of courses and trying to decide what I want to do when I grew up <laughs> I was like well this sounds fun like flying seems like way more fun like it's like it's just like an adventure every day you know what I mean like we just mm -hmm. just get in the airplane and go for a rip and that's what it is every day like just that's just what it's, it is <laughs> it's the coolest office view you could ever ask for yeah, I, I mean, yeah you got it's the coolest view so what and yeah, with a podcast, you can talk about anything. That's the beauty of a podcast. <laughs> the whole point, you know, I want to interview you get so people besides, you know, listen, you're an author, you're a fitness model, and a pilot. I mean, you got an interesting life. You're not this like and you live in Canada, way up in the freaking Alberta, out of all places. And you're from Newfoundland, so you've been around. It's a long ways. Newfoundland's like the furthest eastern province, right? Yeah. Isn't it yeah. So, and then just how did you end up in Fort? How did you end up from Newfoundland all the way to Alberta? Just work? Uh, kind of. My mom and dad met in Newfoundland, and my dad's a professor, like I said, and he moved us all from Newfoundland to Lethbridge because we got a job at the University of Lethbridge and that's where we grew up me and my sisters and my mom and dad and that's where they fly in Lethbridge they call it the windy city because it's super super windy in Lethbridge actually it was so windy here the other day I flew into Calgary and it was um like gusting to 45 knots 45 knots do you like this do you like kind of I know <laughs> do you, but isn't it kind of cool when you got a crosswind and you got a crab it in to do your thing. I kind of like that kind of challenge when I'm flying to, I remember flying out to Midland, Texas and the winds were like that. And I was pretty much just coming in and a crab in the entire flight until I touched down. I love, I love doing stuff like that. When you get those winds and those crosswinds, you're trying to land and 
Oh, I miss flying. I've done it in a while. Really? How long has it been? Since fall. I had a helicopter I could... Uh, I still do. It's just far. It's in Brady, Texas that I can go and get flight hours in. But I don't have an airplane that I can just hop in and and uh, build up time. But it's just right difficult right now because I'm low time pilot to find a pilot job. I mean, I've had some bites and I've had people call and then they'll just be like, the guy hired me to fly the Learjet, called me back because he's working somewhere else. And then, yeah, let's meet. And he's talking how much I want to get paid. And, and then I never heard from him. I'm like, what? Okay. So, I mean, it's awesome that you got a ton of hours because that's, I mean, you got smooth, you know, you got your ATP, all that stuff. That's very cool. It's a lot of work. Yeah. Well, you know, being persistent year after year after year. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You have to. I don't know. Like it, yeah, I don't know. Like I find that with aviation, it's kind of like, People say it's who you know in the industry, but I haven't really found that. Like, I feel like a lot of the jobs I've gotten, I just get them, like, myself. But, like, I feel like also, I feel like you really have to harass people if you want the job. You really have to harass them. <laughs> I'm like, I oh, sometimes I agree with this. Sometimes you have to, like, bother. I did, and then he just stopped contacting me, and I was like, you know, there's only so much you can bother a person, and then they stop. It's like a lot of attraction. Law of attraction. Yeah. What about it? Well, I mean, I think sometimes our thoughts can get in the way of us seeing an opportunity through negative thinking. You know what I mean? Like, uh-huh. yeah, like I, I was having a really hard time finding a job. It was like a really bad time. It was about 12 years ago, and there was like a lot of, um, stuff going on in the industry where nobody was hiring so many people were laid off and it was very difficult to find work and i'd been laid off and my my line of credit was like getting close to maxed out i barely could afford to buy groceries of course i always prioritize eating healthy so i was like <laughs> i'm gonna buy these healthy groceries even though i have no money and um Yeah, so I had this list of like all these companies that I was trying to get on with. Like I was looking for a job, but it's difficult when you're looking for a job to be like, you are the job that I want. You're the important ones. Like any job will do at this point. I just need a paycheck. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was was getting crazy. So I I was messaging all these people and it's hard to keep track of them, right? And I was talking to a girlfriend of mine. She's also a pilot. She used to be a student of mine because I used to teach people how to fly. She was became like one of my best friends. So I was talking to her on the phone telling her I couldn't find a job it wasn't going very good and I was just like being super negative and I was just like I called everyone I've tried everything I will sit there and I will be looking like I would be sitting in somebody's like office for hours waiting for like the chief pilot to come in so I could hand them my resume still no chief pilot no, nobody would show up I couldn't I would leave my resume nobody would get it like it was just very it was a very difficult time and I was just having a really impossible time finding work and then she made fun of me because I had been reading all these books about the law of attraction and the secret and like the thoughts are so powerful and all this stuff she's like oh I thought that you thought that your thoughts were so powerful and that you were like and I was literally having a meltdown I was actually crying on the phone at first and she thought that I was like laughing and I was like I'm crying (laughs) 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 and then I was like I stopped crying I'm like okay you're right you're right I'm having a meltdown and I need to find a job and I'm gonna find a job and I'm just gonna change I need to change how I'm thinking about finding this job. I need to think like, of course, somebody wants to hire me. I am a really hard worker and I am have all these talents and qualities that anybody would be happy to have me on board as a team player. And I just need to, there's something I've missed. I've missed something. There's a company out there that needs me that's in alignment with what I need. And I'm in alignment with ladies. I'm going to find them. So I looked at my list of people and I realized that there was one company that I had missed that I I hadn't actually called that person. I called everyone else. I was like, Jack, that person, no, 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 no. These guys are not hiring. There was one person that I had not contacted and that I had missed because I was so negative. I thought I had called them all. But when I looked at it again, I realized there was a missed, there was a missed person there. Called that person, got on an interview and uh, I was hired by them the next day. Nice. So for that, 
changed my life. That particular moment was like changed my entire life path by changing how I was thinking about being distraught and negative. You know what I mean? She was right. I needed to shift my focus on seeing, thinking positively and believing because I feel like our, our brains can actually like hide the evidence that's real, like the things that are there, the opportunity by us, like your circuits of your brain will like literally shut off visibility to what's right in front of you, the opportunity. You ever hear that? It's in life you'll be face. Hold on. Something like God ordained opportunities brilliantly disguised as a challenge. I always yeah. remember that. I haven't heard that, but that I believe that to be true. And I was just thinking something along the lines of that today. Yeah. It, it, it is. I mean, you have to, like you said, you got to get through all the clutter and the dust and everything and the smoke and it's there. You have to fight for it sometimes, but there are opportunities. I know what you're saying, but that's, I always think of that one. It's in life. You'd be faced with brilliant God ordained opportunities, brilliantly disguised as problems or challenges. That was the quote, something like that, you know, so you, you can look at it as a problem or a challenge and there's an opportunity somewhere you always hear about successful people, you know, like you said, I called, 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 and then I just called this last one and I got that. Yes. I got a shit ton of no's, but I got one. Yes. And that yes mattered. Speaking of it, cause it, cause your food is important to you. Did you get that Turkey last night? <laughs> no. And I spent $350 at the grocery store and I got the, usually they get- <laughs> how much you have to spend to get a Turkey. Usually, usually around the, time of year for some reason i've always known this year after year i always get a free turkey around easter because you have to spend over like 250 dollars at the grocery store here in town and then they give you like a free item it was toothpaste this year so i got a pack of toothpaste but no Ooh, <laughs> <Yeah>. awesome is <laughs> it is it whitening toothpaste 350 dollars for toothpaste yeah well there was a whole bunch of toothpaste and like, i haven't opened the box yet but it was quite big <laughs> anyways oh. that I was, yeah, I was going to maybe make a turkey if I got a free one, but I'm not really like, I feel like the turkey's so fatty, like the, the meat and then like the, the skin over the turkey, like they live alone. So like, I don't want to eat like a 30 pound turkey. That's why I need to do some turkey on. You see wild turkeys, they're all, there's no fat at all. It's, it's really weird though. Wild turkey, you know, how on a, on a, a store-bought turkey, you can eat the leg, the, the drumstick on a wild turkey. They really, uh. It's very ligaments. It's very sinewy. You can, I've had some cooks. I've done two podcasts with uh, wild game cooks and they've, they've told me how to, cause I hate wasting, especially on a wild animal that, you know, and they, they told me ways to use that meat to get the most out of it, like through soups and, you know, cooking it in uh, broth and then taking the meat off of it once it's cooked and, but yeah, wild turkeys, the turkey breast is just phenomenal. It is all, there's no fat at all. Have you ever, have you ever hunted? No. No? You should try it. Not saying, I'm not encouraging to kill something if you don't want to do it. But you, <laughs> but, you, but, you, but you like to aim, take a bow, go bow hunting. Yeah, I wonder. I don't know. I would feel really bad about killing an animal, I think, but... And if I was going to eat it, I feel a bit differently about it. I mean, we're eating meat anyways. Yeah. Well, we're disconnected from how it gets to the grocery store. So it's already packaged, you know, and then you see it. You don't think about how the animal. Hold on. Oh, I thought my, my male Rottweiler came in. I thought I was going to pee on the fan because he was sniffing at it. And <clears throat> sometimes he likes to mark his, uh, territory in the house uh -oh. no he's good but uh yeah so that's you know but yeah if you're not gonna eat it that's why i felt like i was glad i spoke to those two chefs and they explained to me certain ways because i don't want to waste an animal i oh, you know yeah. I, yeah i just don't want i'm not into killing things to kill it even a snake i won't kill a snake i've had people like why don't you kill that rattlesnake it's like why it doesn't it's just doing rattlesnake stuff. I just happen to come upon it. That's all. Yeah, totally. I don't know. Like, I feel like 
Um, I'm looking at the option of coming out with a vegan edition of uh-huh. the vegan book or the ultimate sequence book or even just another book altogether, not call it either of those names, you know what I mean? Like, but I feel like for me, I've tried going vegan before in the past. And it's hard. It was pretty interesting though. Like the thing that I noticed was how disconnected we are from the meat, like you said. And I started to notice how all occasions are revolved around a big animal. You know what I mean? Like I didn't really notice like Christmas dinner, we got the turkey, we got the ham. And then like I literally started, it was almost like I went through like this, like, I don't know, like this, like awakening of veganism that I was closed off to previously. And I started noticing like these trucks driving by with these animals and like all of these turkeys like it was like these cartoon turkeys like come and eat me and i'm like oh that's so horrible <laughs> like anyways i was like see that i've yeah. seen that before with the chickens they'll have them stacked on the tractor trailer and they'll have like 20 chickens in each little crate and they'll be piled up high and they're still alive they're driving on the highway and occasionally uh you'd see dead ones because they must have fallen out or something of the crate yeah so how does because now being a vegan because you got to get your right proteins and stuff so you're going to work with someone who's like knows how to do all that because isn't there certain ways like to combine to get the right amount of protein and amino acids it's i mean to do it right you really have to have someone from what i understand it's 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 a lot of work yeah i i Coach, so I already know like how to do it. Okay. I know how to combine the foods to be, like bodybuilders' foods. Um, I have met a lot of vegan bodybuilders. Like I went to this one competition. It really was interesting. It was really interesting. What I found was really interesting was I was at the Arnold's in 2018, I think it was, and I went by myself to compete there and. I ended up meeting all of these vegan bodybuilders. The thing that was so different, like I didn't place very good. It was a two day show. And because I didn't place good, just like you said, sometimes things are bad or actually like a God given opportunity. And what it was was that I met these vegans and ended up hanging out with them for like, like a full day, these girls, there was like a whole team of vegan bodybuilder girls. And it was just so <coughs> cool to like hear about their diets and like how they were eating and they still look like pretty much just as good as the people that were eating meat. So the physical body wasn't skinny. Like it wasn't like a skinny, vegan, right? They were almost as much muscle as the people that were eating protein. So it was just interesting to me, like that aspect of vegan bodybuilding. And yeah, anyways, it changed my, my, my it. I need to connect you with my friend Caroline. She's going to be coming on here. Like I've known her for, you should see her. She is jacked. Um, pretty much her mother had cancer. And so she changed her because it was because of food stuff. So she changed her diet completely. She was never, she's a dancer, like a professional dancer. She travels around the country and does clinics and, but, I remember meeting her. I worked at a health club in New York City, and she was 19, and she was just jacked. And I would watch her and her um, dance team members. They would come and do their stuff in the studios up there in the in the gym. And because I used to be a strength conditioner, I've worked with athletes, and dancers are athletes. Oh my god, these girls are not girls and guys. They're doing incredible stuff, and their bodies are just so strong but caroline just eats she strictly i think she is vegan i mean as far as i know she she never posts anything about meat so i'm pretty sure she's vegan but i mean as far as saying like those bodybuilders she is just cut and just muscular not like you know she's fit she looks very fit and it's like as long as foods like it doesn't really matter eating like the animal protein or just like rice and- see that's that's funny you mention that because people think <clears throat> i eat a plant but like for my protein drink it's a plant-based protein garden life stuff and people don't understand that your body doesn't know the difference between whey protein and milk you know 
it's protein. It breaks it down into amino acids and stuff. And it's funny how supplement companies, you remember when he talked about body for life, remember when EAS, do you remember when he had his supplement company built? Like EAS was the, the big thing. Body for life, if you were to go, body for life takes you to EAS. I noticed that the other day. I wanted to see what his website They're was still like. in business? EAS? Yeah, it looks like it is, but body for life isn't like a website anymore like it used to be. Uh-huh. Yeah. I just want to yeah. check it out. What are you guys doing these days? But I remember EAS was like the innovative supplement company at the time. Like they're very sports science oriented. And, and it's funny now you watch certain like MMA has their own uh, supplement brands of people and bodybuilding has their own supplement brands and uh, the hiking and hunting industry has it. But it's all they're all the same thing. But people think it's I know it's weird, but it's funny you mention that because your body doesn't know the difference between plant protein and meat protein but my friend caroline did it because for health reasons my body feels a difference like i feel like when i take animal protein out of my diet like i'm not talking about protein powder um, right. i'm not sure then if i notice a big difference between protein powders like vegan versus whey i feel it when i don't eat meat like do you think that's has- do you think that maybe could do too with because the meat is factory farm meat? Probably most likely. I don't know how if you buy their grass fed and all that stuff, but you know, I don't eat organic. It's pretty hard to get and very expensive this far. Oh yeah, time. hell yeah! It's like you need to you need to take out a loan to get food sometimes when you buy organics. Like it's it's I don't know how it works up there, but here, in order to get the organic approval, they gotta fill out all this pay all this ridiculous stuff. Where, where chemically sprayed herbicides, pesticides, all that stuff, but you don't have to know what was sprayed on them. You don't have to know it. And they sell for cheaper, but yet organic has to go through this whole process to get labeled organic. And yet we can eat chemically sprayed fruits and vegetables, no problem. And you don't even have to know what they're spraying on them. You know, they just, I don't yeah, know, it's just kind of weird. I guess, um, yeah, I wish I could live in California where all the organic food is, you know what I mean? But I don't know. It's all over now, organic. There's a lot, you know, because Whole Foods is everywhere here. And Do you guys have Whole Foods up there or no? Oh, we don't have one in Fort McMurray. I don't know if we have one in Edmonton or Calgary. I don't remember seeing one. But, yeah, there's a big organic section. I just... I know I should probably should eat organic. I just don't. I know that the organic food has higher amounts of fruits and or sorry, vitamins and minerals and yeah. like higher in vitamins, like quite a bit. But I just find that like the organic food, it just like rots so quickly and then like Yeah. Like, That's it, what does suck. And you know, it's like it's all falling apart and it's like rotten and I'm like, well, I won't be able to eat rotten food. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are right. It is. It is. It's probably something to do with how it's modified or anything. But yeah, it does. It's weird how like everything, everything does. It, it spoils a lot and rot rots a lot quicker than uh, non organic. Yeah, you are right. That's right. Yeah. How about eggs? Can you can you can you do a gardener? Do you have time? Because you're busy. You wouldn't probably have time to do a garden, would you? Well, I'm not really a gardener type, but I would like to maybe at some point. Maybe when I get older, I'll be a gardener. When you retire? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's one thing I like enjoying to doing too is gardening. Um, so the competition starts. Garden. The competition starts April 12th, right? Okay, so today is the third. This one's coming to an end on the 4th. We're taking a week off to get our ducks in a row. And then the next one starts April 12th until July 4th. And then we're starting the next one on the 5th of July. And then whatever that turns into 12 weeks. And then the very next day, like we're basically going back to back to back. So we're going to have four fitness challenges in 2021. So yeah, it's going to be busy, busy watching the girls and guys working hard. Um, thing is right now um 
yeah, we're, we're kind of in a test phase with the men, because we have, but we are looking for men that, that want to be our test victims. I have worked with men before and they had crazy transformations. Uh, guys using the bikini model cookbook because it is just a bodybuilder's cookbook. It's food, it's yeah. Food. It's, it's okay. I'm not gonna turn you into a bikini model, I promise. No. But yeah, you should do it. You should be our you should be our test subject. Be interesting oh, should I? <laughs> <laughs> and you do meditation. My, my business partner, she does I'm not that. laughing. I'm laughing. I'm not laughing at the, the I'm laughing at the idea that I know how I am and I'd be like, oh. I don't I do have discipline. I just don't know if I'd I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's something I think about. Everyone would get you more ambitious? I can't say no. I, I don't know. I can't say no. <laughs> I can't say no, but yeah, I just, uh, I'm kind of stubborn. I get in a groove and yeah. not that I, yeah, I, it's hard to, to, I mean, as far as eating goes, I pretty much eat the same thing every day, except for Saturdays. And I do that intermittent fasting too. I do that twice a week. You ever try that? Uh, I don't, I have, I don't really like to fast. Yeah. It's not bad. It's see uh, the hardest thing for me is not thinking about food. It's kind of weird on days that you, you're fast. So I try and do something like a podcast or do something to keep my mind off food. Otherwise I'm just sitting there thinking about, and then my stomach starts growling because I'm thinking about food and I'm like, oh. how long do you fast for? Um, I do it Sunday and Wednesday. Well, I'm kind of, I didn't do it this Wednesday because I was hungry. So I ate, but when I do it, it's usually until about 24 hours. Um, and then I'll have a, I'll have a meal that evening. But other than that, um, I would die. I would be able to get past two o'clock. Like I've already eaten. I had to eat twice already before our interview. Cause I was like, so hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I just ate pancakes. I got my stuff cooking, so I've got uh, rice. Today is rice, and normally I have spaghetti. But I went to the grocery store this morning, and then I got everything. And then I was driving back. I was oh, and I didn't feel like turn around to get spaghetti, so I'm going to use rice instead. Right on. Yeah, yeah I don't. So. Intermittent fasting. I don't feel like it's necessary as far as like body goals. I think that I don't know. I guess everybody works differently, like the reasons why it works differently, but I don't find it effective for me. Except for I could do a fast for like an hour in Ooh. the morning. An hour. Wow. <laughs> no, no, a whole hour before you oh. yeah, wake up, get out of bed and be like, okay, I'm gonna clean the house, do a bunch of errands. And then an hour later, I'm like, okay, I'm starving. Time to eat. <laughs> are you gonna? So, are you gonna do any more competing? Uh, I don't have any plan to at the moment. Um, I hurt my ankle and my calf, and yeah, like it's not bad. Like it's not a bad, bad injury. But as far as being competitive and being at the level that I want to be at, like. If I were to compete, I would be going after the IFBB Pro card, and I know that that kind of competitiveness would require like a hundred percent commitment to my diet and training. And I can't do cardio right now; like I wouldn't be able to go for a run. I would injure myself. So I can I can walk, and I can do uh, I can do pretty much everything like that a normal person can do. <laughs> but I know that if I were to push myself, that it wouldn't it wouldn't be good. So. Yeah, that's why I feel like the fitness challenge tempo is more my speed. Like it's still like you do an hour, um, do a lot of modifications for people if they need to. Um, I work around my, my calf, my ankle. If I, if I can't do a certain exercise, say like a squat or something really heavy, I would just do an exercise that I could do that wasn't going to interfere with my leg in a way that I didn't want it to be interfering. So do people check in? Do you have like the certain times they check in on this challenge with you just to see how their progress is going? Yes. Yeah, so we have a group page on Facebook. So everybody can post there and ask questions every single day. And me and Destiny check the page whenever. Um, randomly, we check the page. But uh, we have check-ins at four weeks and eight weeks. And then the 12-week 
at the end. We submit everything on the True Coach app, which is where we have the, um, the program. And yeah, so they send their pictures and they let us know. Uh, we're going to be having more of a questionnaire on the next round about sp more specific questions that I want them to answer. Because um, yeah, the more the more details we can get about people, like the more details we can get from the clients about what they're experiencing, the better we can help them. Mm -hmm. So having them ask, uh, answer specific questions, like how close to the diet have you been sticking? Um, like what is your That's background? the hardest part. That's it the is. hardest part. Well, if they get the bikini model cookbook, they don't have to worry about it, right? There you go. Some of the girls they've been posting their progress pictures and the recipes that they've been using, and it's been really cool seeing them using my recipes. Some of these recipes I haven't even made in like, because I wrote this book like over 10 years ago, right? So some of these recipes I haven't remade because I'm creating new recipes. So it's cool to see the recipes that I remember making when I was like a pilot living in some city where I was like, oh yeah, I remember that recipe. And I remember like how come I made it and what I was doing at that moment in time where I was living as a con call, working for an air ambulance, put my chicken in the oven and then I got called out for a flight and I'm like, oh, I gotta take my chicken. <laughs> 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 but yeah, so um, but yeah, it's cool seeing them getting the results just like I did. Like, cause I needed, for me, I wrote the cookbook because I found that the diet from fitness competitions was so boring, right? Like chicken, broccoli, uh, oatmeal, tilapia. Yeah. Yeah, tilapia like, oh yeah. Just so you know, like these ingredients are in the cookbook, but added like spice and flavor so that it's more like a real recipe rather than like so plain and boring. And the thing is, it doesn't have to be plain and boring because there's so much stuff you can put into the food that isn't going to make you bloat or get puffy and make you look bad. There's so many ways to make the food delicious so that you still get a similar result to a bodybuilder or like a fitness competitor, but with like all the flavor of a regular recipe that you like. So it doesn't feel flavor. like it. Flavor's good. And yeah, I've, like I said, I've seen some of the pictures you posted of people who have done this the first time around. And it's, I'm like, how long? I'm really surprised at the change in such a short month, but then again, they're dedicated. So it, it and uh, obviously they, they get help from you guys for doing it too. So that's cool. And it's cool that you're motivating people, especially now with COVID, you know, when people have to work out from home and they can easily let themselves go and you're giving them an opportunity to take advantage of the time to not just be lazy. We're trying to create a positive, like mental health environment too, because there's been a lot of people, I don't know, like, I don't know about what's happening around you, but there's a lot of people committing suicide. Yeah. I mean, it's, I think it's more with a kid. It's depends. Like some people just can't take the, and I'm not, I understand. It's like, the more we learn about this virus, it isn't as crazy as they're saying. Cause once you're out, you know, you can be outside and have, you know, you don't have to wear a mask all the time. But then again, see, I'm really somewhat of a germaphobe, so I have no problem not shaking hands ever again. Um, and the mask, yeah. But people sometimes are really hygiene habits are, I mean, that's clearly how a lot of this stuff gets spread anyways. But I mean, at the same time, like I said, you guys are encouraging people to, because like they, they say being healthy is one of the, the factors that is stopping the virus from like affecting people who are healthy because they're staying in shape and they're taking care of themselves. So, yeah. and you're trying to get people motivated at, at these hard times. Cause especially up there in Canada, you guys, a lot of these places are still in lockdown and you yeah. can go freaking nutty. People go crazy if they don't get to work out. Like we go crazy. Yeah. Like, you got to move. I go crazy if I don't work out. And then I started doing like these at home workouts. And I was like, Oh, I just feel so amazing. And then, I see people posting stuff like negative things and complaining. I'm like, I just feel so amazing from my workout. I'm like, because <laughs> it creates endorphins, right? Yeah. If you, um, if you can't get that and you don't want to work out at home or you're not going to learn how, then I, I don't know. Like, I feel like the only option is like, it's weird that the, the, the liquor store and the marijuana stores, because marijuana is legal in Canada now, but they're all open, right? The gyms are closed, but no, you can get high and drink as much as you want because like, that's going to, yeah, health. the alcohol. Anyways, yeah, we could yeah. do a whole new podcast on that too, alcohol and stuff. But um, 
but yeah, I mean, you're giving out people opportunity and it's, you know, it's up to them. But like I said, some of the results I've seen, I'm pretty amazed at how quickly they've done it, which is bravo to your program because it's working. You and Destiny, you said? Yes, are doing Destiny. Um, I think the biggest thing is just like, I feel like people's bodies will change quite dramatically when they change what they're doing, if what yes. they're doing before. And I always know, because I can tell because I have worked with so many clients, I see their before pictures. And I hear from people, they say, nothing has worked for me. Nothing has worked for me. And then I'm like, cool, let me look at your My Fitness file. And I'm like, I'm like, looking at it, I'm like, you're eating processed foods. Of course it's not Yes. Oh, God. <laughs> do you ever tell, do you ever tell people to stay in that stage just on the outside of the grocery store? Because that's where all the real food is. Once you go inside the, except for bread, but everything else is all packaged. All the inside the store, like the shelves, it's all packaged food. Yeah, there's definitely, there's a few goodies in the aisles. Like Yeah, you can't, yeah. You got to have occasionally <laughs> treat yourself. Yeah, definitely. Like the best is on the exterior for sure. Like you're saying. Definitely. Well, let's see. So it's the fitness challenge, the fitness challenge.ca, right? Yes. Okay. And then where else? Uh, give all your social media, all that stuff where people can find you. Okay. I'm the Bikini Fit Coach uh, for Instagram. And then my YouTube channel is Bikini Fit. And I have another website, bikinifit.com and the bikini mall cookbook.com, which is going to be up uh, soon. I'm doing a new website, but that's a whole other story. Um, and then there's Destiny Easers and Photography by Easers. That's my business partner. And the fitnesschallenge.ca and fitnesschallenge.ca. We have two Instagram handles for the, uh, we had different accounts and I, we just decided to pass them everywhere, make it confusing for people. <laughs> that's where my main page is and that's where i'd be posting and directing traffic to different places from there okay and i'll i'll uh i'll send i'll try and connect you and caroline and maybe you guys can she's because she's and she can maybe answer some questions about the whole vegan thing because i'm pretty sure she's uh she's been doing it for a long time but yeah she's in phenomenal shape yeah i'll see if you guys can check and do the podcast call it bikini fit or something i'm telling you it's too easy yeah too easy to do it as you can yeah. see you just sit around and talk <laughs> yeah it'd be super cool i'd love that i'll have yeah. to pick it a little bit after this yeah if you have any questions just ask because uh, and it's easy all the stuff to set up it's too easy it really is sweet all right cool well thanks for coming on kathleen thank you for having me you're welcome have a great day you as well. Thank you. Bye. I did it.